Hello, and welcome to another edition of Medicare Simplified with your host, Dave Miller. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Medicare Simplified. I'm your host, Dave Miller. And today I got a unique interview with a very nice lady named Lynette. And she's got over 40 years in physical therapy experience, but recently she had a unique series of events happen that I felt important enough to where we were going to do an interview with her, and she was nice enough to do, agree to it. So give me one second. I'm going to transition her in. Good afternoon, Lynette. Nice to see you here today. Hello, Dave. How are you? I'm, I'm glad to be here. Doing well, thanks. And I'm so glad you agreed to take some time to warn our listeners about what went on. But first, can you give us a little idea of what uh, you've done for, with a career as far as like physical therapy and spreading the knowledge of certain things? Well, I became a physical therapist uh, way back in the 1970s. Um, and most of my career, I spent in short-term rehab, which is if rehab if somebody, say, breaks their hip or has a total knee, and then they go to rehab for maybe 10, two weeks, three weeks before they go home. Or I did in-home care, which I really love, which is one-on-one, -on -one, and you're following up, and the rule there is the patient must be homebound. And your job is to get them so they're not homebound anymore or make sure they have everything that they need. Um, but there was a time that uh, I got a little disgruntled with some of the Medicare rules and a big change that they made. And uh, I went to work for a major equipment company, and I did get the opportunity to travel all over the country and educate providers and patients on the durable medical equipment and why they would choose this walker over that walker or this wheelchair over that wheelchair or how to measure for them and things like that. So I've had a really good career, and I loved every single minute of it. Well, it sounds like me. You just love what you did, and you kept on doing it for quite some time. I sure did. And that's what I like about what I do, because I'm not stuck in an office. And when you did the home care and the traveling, same thing. You're not stuck in a stuffy office all day. You're, you're, you're out and about. You're meeting with people. And that is fun, isn't it? It is. It is. People are wonderful. Yeah. I, mean, I have I've a lot some, of good memories. I'm sorry. And that, that's cool, because you had a career you loved, and... Well, I got to admit, I like what I do, too, because educating people is important. And there's so many scams and so many things that go crazy. Like um, we actually met through your insurance agent, who is a mutual friend. And um, she told me you had some interesting event or I don't know how to phrase it, but something very interesting happened at the dermatologist office. And I thought it was good enough to where one of the reasons I wanted to do this podcast and thank you for taking your time out to do this for me. So what happened? Well, I, I had to go to the dermatologist. It was a minor issue. And um, when you go into a new medical office, of course, they give you lots of papers to fill out, you know, all your medical history and a consent form. And I want to warn people to read the consent form because I did read it. And in it, it said, and I can't do it verbatim because I, I made a mistake and didn't get a copy. But it did say that it takes a time away from patient care to seek authorization from all the various insurance companies. It is your responsibility, meaning my responsibility, to get authorization for any treatment recommended. I'm like, whoa. So I crossed that all out because... I'm not going to have them recommend treatment, and then I'm going to end up paying for it because my insurance company didn't authorize it. I crossed it all out, and then next to in the column, I put my initials and a date. And then at the very bottom, I wrote, I do not authorize any treatment that is not pre-authorized by my insurance company. And then I signed and dated the form. Um, I made a mistake. I should have kept a copy of it. But I thought, geez, you know, what patients know to read that and what happens if they consent to treatment and the insurance company doesn't doesn't cover it so that's when i called my friend and i said hey you need to be aware of this and sally got a hold of me we had a great discussion and lynette i am so glad i found someone to do this podcast and interview 
that can warn people of some real life things that are going on right now. And I guarantee you someone out there is probably saying, oh crap, what did I do when I went to my such and such office? And to give you an idea, these procedures that are, whatever they're doing, could cost hundreds or a couple of thousand dollars. And if the insurance company turns it down, you pay for it. Exactly. And Medicare might reimburse you 80%. If you file Medicare, of course, that takes extra forms, extra time, and then who knows how many months before you get paid. And then exactly. you still have 20%. And exactly. Then then they give you a prescription or something. Oh, yes. that prescription? And that was the other thing. I, if, as I left the office, I, I needed a prescription um, for, for a lotion. Wasn't a big deal. But then they said, well, now you can get this with a prescription from your pharmacy, or we can have it sent from our pharmacy, and it will cost the same as if you pick it up. And it'll be delivered right to your home. So, you know, just sign here and we'll have that taken care of. So, you know, I went with their pharmaceutical company and it actually ended up costing me more because I had to pay for shipping. I also had a little delay of several days to receive it where I could have picked it up that day at my pharmacist with my insurance. Now, they did offer a nice convenience for you, but it didn't save you a dime. It actually cost you more money. Right. They didn't tell me that I was going to have to pay shipping. Whereas you could have said, no, I'll take the prescription. You could have called it in and had it delivered through your mail script, or you could have just gone to your local drugstore and gotten it. Exactly. Yes, I and could have. And it would have been on your way home. So you're going to pass it. It anyway, would have right? been. Right. So lesson learned number two. And this all happened in one day. That was the funny part. Yes. <laughs> so Lynette, is there anything else that happened that day as far as your dermatologist and everything? That, is there anything else you want to add to this part of our interview or ta our discussion? No, not regarding that day. I, and, you know, I could also say that I was very pleased with the care that I received. And I really did like the, the staff that I met. So, you know, it was all good. It's just I'm it's just a warning. Watch that consent form. What I would have done is the same thing you did. But I would have also said, well, if I'm going to do the research with my insurance company to check for authorization and so forth, I will be sending you a bill for my time and services rendered because my time isn't free. And if I'm going to do your person's job, then I feel I should be on payroll and I will hand you a W-9. Well, I did Only think fair. as I was... Yes, as I was as I was reading it, I was thinking, what do they have the billing staff for, and what do they have all these receptionists for? The office is crowded with people. What are they doing? Exactly, and it's how I feel sometimes at the grocery store when I do the self checkout. I'm like, that thing on Facebook was actually correct. Due to the upcoming holiday, all our self service checkers will be off for today. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to the store, but. To me, I don't understand why they're pawning things off because some people wouldn't even have a clue as to how to go about getting an authorization for a certain procedure. And I don't know about all insurance companies, but why would they authorize something that's already been done? Usually they get the authorization prior to the treatment. If you've already had the treatment and now you're trying to get authorization, I don't know, but I think most companies would say, well, you should have seen us prior. We could have authorized it, but since you've already had it done, it's on you. And that's another drawback to that form. That's exactly right. And mm -hmm. I sort of did have that happen to the dentist's office or an oral surgeon's office. Uh-oh. Let's talk about the dentist. What happened? Well, I had to have a tooth pulled, and I chose to go back to an oral surgeon that I know who was not in my network. Now, I knew he was not in my network. Okay. And I, when I went, he said he'd pull it. And there was a charge and I had to pay that up front and that then they would help me complete the forms for the insurance company. Well, I got about five pages of paperwork from the insurance company and um, well, another mistake that my insurance advisor would yell at me about is I just said, ah, it's already done and I let it go. But I should have had all those forms completed and collected that money. But I'm sure they count on a lot of people doing exactly what I just did. Oh, my. That was another nightmare, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
and that whole nightmare started with a a dentist that was in network and uh, was a I walked in the office and I sat there and looked around. It was the first visit and I went, this man has a huge overhead because that orifice was gorgeous. It was all marble and glass. And um, and there were statements there such as, oh, she still has coverage. We can schedule another procedure. Oh, oh my word. Yeah. Yes, that, that truly did happen. I call that the milkman because he's milking anything he can get. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. Lynette, I'll tell you what. Everything we've talked about are important things that people need to hear. Signing yes. documents before you read them. I've never done that. And now I'm going to be even more scrutinizing whenever a doctor hands me something. And the other thing that I'm a little weary of, too, is sometimes they'll have you do an online form before you go see the doctor. Read every line of that online form because it may be something similar to what Lynette just had to modify. <laughs> but also, do you really feel comfortable filling out medical information on an online form that could be going through how many servers to get to from one connection to the other? I mean, that could get hacked anywhere along the line. And then your medical information's out there, your personal identifiable information's out there, your social security, your birth date. How many things do you need to be have your identity stolen? Do the paperwork in the office on paper. Go in five or minutes. Or maybe early. you could print out the form and fill it out at home and take it to them. Exactly. Either way, it's on paper and not going through the internet. That's something I'm I very, agree with you. I am very hesitant to do anything on the internet anymore unless I know it's a direct shot or it's places I know are secure. And that would be none. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, if they can hack uh, Department of Defense, Homeland Security, and all these places in D.C., and you know they got some good software, what do you think a doctor's office is going to be? That's going to be a walk in the park for them, you know? That's why I'm not oh, like yeah. doing any medical stuff over the Internet. Have you not ever received a letter from a medical company telling you that they've been hacked or had ransomware? Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten them. I've gotten them. And that's another reason to print it off and hand it to the people. Well, now we got to fill it in. Isn't that what you get paid for? <laughs> if I got yes. to do your job, I want paid. <laughs> That's what I say. I agree. Well, Annette, thank you so much for your valuable time and all the information you gave us. It wasn't a very long interview, but it doesn't have to be to have some vitally important information. Lynette has been smart enough and has enough experience behind her to know to look for things and read documents thoroughly. She could have got hammered with a major bill if that had not happened. And folks, that ends another edition of Medicare Simplified. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you will continue to do so. Don't forget the little subscribe button so you don't miss any additions that come up and good information. Hit the like button. That way it'll get out more often. And we'll see you on our next stop along our journey of doing it right the first time with no mistakes. Have a great day. If you've enjoyed this podcast and don't want to miss future episodes of Medicare Simplified with me, Dave Miller, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to check out my book, Medicare Ready, Set, Go, available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle format. If you're looking for Medicare advice, please reach out to me at dave at mig, the number four, letter U, dot net, or online at mig4letteru.net.